The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I say to you that listen, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to, lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be called children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you, a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Today's gospel continues from last Sunday where Jesus is giving his Sermon on the Mount or, according to Luke, Sermon on the Plain. Well, whether Jesus is preaching on the Mount or on the Plain, he clearly has a very strong point. Last week we read all about the Beatitudes, according to Luke. Then today we have the commandments. Remember we said last week Beatitudes were kind of like uh, the way people are now, describing the issues that they were dealing with in the moment. Now we're dealing with actual commands. I think you probably could feel that in today's gospel when Jesus says, be merciful, and do not judge, forgive, give. All these are commands, not beatitudes. They are, in fact, commandments given by Jesus. In other words, this is the core teaching that we hear in the Sermon on the Mount or the Sermon on the Plain. My, what I began to wonder about, though, this week is why are we hearing about the story in the Old Testament lesson uh, about Joseph? Now, I'm asking you to go back into Sunday School 101. You remember back when you were in Sunday School, when you were about maybe six or seven? I don't remember it either, so it's been a while for me, <laughs> for me. But you have to go back to when you were a little kid learning about the story of Joseph. Remember the coat of many colors? That's this Joseph that we're talking about now. In the book of Genesis, the saga of Joseph is told in 13 chapters of the book of Genesis. Chapter 37, all the way through chapter 50. In other words, a huge portion of the book of Genesis all leading up to when the children of Israel are now in, in Egypt. If you recall the story, Joseph, as a young teenage boy, perhaps no more than about 12 or 13, he was the favorite of his father, Jacob. And his father, Jacob, loved him above all his other sons, and Jacob gave him that coat of many colors. In other words, he gave him the best he had. And then the other brothers felt slighted, and so what did they do? They threw him in a pit. They were trying to kill him. Then they decided to sell him into slavery in Egypt. Now think about that. And what did they tell Jacob back home, their father? What did those elder brothers say? Ah, your son, your favorite son, is dead. 
So now years go by, and much happens. If you're not familiar with it, or if you have a little trouble remembering Sunday School 101 when you were about six or seven years old, you might want to go back and read the story. I happen to love the story of Joseph. It's one of the most wonderful stories in the Old Testament, and it's actually a full saga. You hear it all the way, basically, from Joseph's birth all the way through his death there in chapter 50 of Genesis. So you hear the whole saga drama of Joseph. It's a wonderful, powerful story. And I have to admit, I kind of wondered, why are we reading today? You know, Jim Greno read today's lessons from Genesis, and I got thinking, why are we hearing this when, uh, in connection with today's gospel? More often than not, I don't know whether you know this, but the liturgical writers that put all these readings together, they tried to put the Old Testament lesson, sometimes even the New Testament lesson, and the gospel lesson all kind of together so that they make kind of a point. And I had, had trouble figuring out what the point was, but I think I finally found it when I read one of the commentators that said, think about Joseph. He's been sold into slavery. His father believes he's dead. He goes to Egypt as a slave, and yet he rises through the years to the highest rank, serving as like a prefect right next to Pharaoh. Our lesson today kind of alludes to that. So many years go by, many, many years go by, Joseph is now a ruler in Egypt, and his brothers come to visit him and don't recognize him because so many years had gone by, and now they're standing before their very own brother, and that's where today's lesson picks up. It says this, Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Uh, is, your is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here, for God sent me here before you to preserve life. Big famine in the land. And those brothers are going to find some food to feed the family. And what do they discover? They discover they're talking to their own brother, Joseph, the little boy that they thought they had gotten rid of forever. Now, remember that story. Now you go to the gospel. Here it comes. Jesus said, I say to you that, listen, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. The core of Jesus' teaching is all kind of summed up right here. Love your enemies. Do you think Joseph probably had a lot, went through a lot of years hating his elder brothers? I kind of imagine I probably would. Down deep, if I were honest. I wouldn't be happy with them. I was sold, they sold me into slavery. They tell dad I'm dead. And he lives in slavery for many years. The story of Saga of Joseph is so powerful, I think it was actually a great choice to connect it with this gospel lesson today. Love your enemies. It's not a suggestion. It's actually a command. It's not just a good idea. It's something we have to do. And it's interesting, the word here is that word agape. And you've heard me talk about agape before. Unconditional, unmerited, undeserved love. Love expecting nothing in return. And Jesus alludes to that in today's gospel. All about giving away what you have, expecting nothing in return. That is the Christian principle of agape. Could any of us really possibly attain to it? You know, I got to admit, I have people that I'm not all that thrilled with. Do I hate them? You know, I, I, you've heard me tell this before, too. But my mother always told me there was one word I was never to use in my entire life. Okay? And you've heard me say this before. The word is hate. Have I ever had somebody, though, that I really just hated? Yeah, yeah if I were really kind of honest with myself. Yeah, I do. My guess is you do, too. Okay, so let's be honest. There are those people that drive us crazy, okay? There are those people who just drive us nuts. They get, you know, it's like they get irritating, and they get under your skin, and you don't want to be around them. 
And then you hear today's gospel. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. And why? That's my question. Resonating down through history, ever since long before Joseph, maybe back to the Garden of Eden, if you will. Why? Why are we told to love? Why are we commanded to love? You remember the first commandment, by the way, of the Ten Commandments? You know, thou shalt have no other gods but me. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength, and love your neighbors yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. That word comes resonating. That's part of the reason we sang that hymn at the beginning of today's service. God is love. God is love, and God expects us to love like God does. Now, it's not easy. I admit. I'm the first one to admit. It's not easy. There are those who just drive us bananas, okay? And if you want to use the word hate, perhaps. But I think it gets down to something a little bit even deeper than those persons that drive us crazy. It's anyone who actually gets under our soul. And that's the key. Because here in the church, we're here as a hospital for souls. The old-fashioned term is the cure of souls. That's why you came to church today, by the way. Huh? Through the cold and the snow and the ice and all that other stuff. You came to church today because you want to work on your stuff, your soul down deep in the gut. I do too. I come here to hear messages from Jesus that get down into the gut of why I am a Christian, why I am a believer in Christ, because his words aren't necessarily easy, but they're good for my soul. It's what my soul needs. He, Jesus, the great physician, is looking to heal our soul. That's the reason he uses words like forgive as you've been forgiven. Give as you have been given. Love as you have been loved. So, in other words, this is my suggestion. For those persons that just kind of get down under your soul, and we've all got them, love them. Agape them. Agape them anyway. I know it, it's hard. Forgive them. Agape them. Yes, I use that word forgive. That was in today's gospel too, by the way. That was one of those commandments. Forgive as you have been forgiven. Judge not, lest you've been judged. All that's right there in today's gospel. This is the core of Jesus' teaching. And you know why? Because your soul needs it, and mine does too. It's time to let all those past hurts and slights go because they're hurting your soul. They really are. They do. You can feel it. You know it's there. When you think of that person that's just driving you nuts, it's there. Let it go. And love them anyway. Amen.